Hello there people, this is Christian, welcome back to my computer and Fusion 360 and this unscripted video where I try to create this type of uh, cable holder, uh, most probably printed with some flexible filament so you can flop in the cables here and then attach it somehow, so I want to make a parametric model of this. Uh, the inspiration of this comes from this image, that's from a Reddit question. The question was how to make this opening here, so that's an interesting one. But looking at this, uh, I get to thinking this is something you might, if you're a bit more of a beginning fusion, want to make something like this. It's confusing, there's a lot of things. So let's start looking at the image. We have a repetitive pattern. Uh, a red color, that's good. If we slice it down, let's move it over to the pen. This is the only thing we need to model. Then there's a repetitive pattern of this. And my model here, uh, there's a bunch of parameters, is of course parametric in that I can change the number of cables to something like 12 or something like 3. And of course I can change the size of a cable, I can change uh, the spacing in between the cables, I can change the spec support if for some reason you need to get like a really fix support in the back there so you're gonna do some fixing points or something and we can change uh, how the opening is uh, in relation to the diameter of a cable so that's like what I was playing around us to find some useful things so this is gonna be unscripted so I make might make a lot of mistakes so let's just start things new design for remember to uh, save your design and go start by creating a new component so I get everything in a component because I might use this cable holder in some other design so I'm going to create a new component makes it easier to import into other designs uh, that said let's have a look at the image as I said we're going to start with this part here we're going to only do this step one I'm going to make some sketches just to find the geometry of this and I have already done some thinking of course if we have a look at this, we have the primary thing is, of course, the diameter of our cable. And we have an opening here for the cable. Uh, I plan first to do that like an offset, but I ended up doing this dimension here like a ratio of the diameter of the, the cable. So if I change the size of the cable, the uh, opening will follow along with the ratio of like whatever I set it to. The other dimensions we have are let's use yellow we have of course the spacing so we have from this edge here to this edge here we need to have some material in between here and the good thing of course if we look at this if we take the diameter here and we do the spacing in between here uh, I've done some really bad drawing because this side here and this side here this divider here is the same it's the same as this here, so that means that the full distance here should be our diameter and our spacing. So that's D plus S. So we can do, use that in our patterns later. So it means also that D plus S, S is the distance from center to center of this here. I hope I'm not confusing you too much. That's one of the things I want to control. Uh, let's do a little blue. Uh, another thing we can do it over here let's sketch this circle here we know the diameter we already established that and down here we have here you see there's a small dimension here that I'm gonna dimension and we have a dimension up here and of course with the diameter here we have all the dimensions in need which means with this free we have a full height in this direction it's gonna control everything so we don't need any more the last thing I want to talk about are these uh, arc shapes here. We can sketch circles or arcs in uh, Fusion, of course, but I like to avoid tangent circles and tangent arcs because they can sometimes be a bit naughty and fly around the screen. What I will do, I will basically do what I draw over here. I will do, let's sketch over here, I will do the circle. I will do two straight lines down like this. And that's going to connect to this and then I'm going to use a full fillet because that's what this is this is a full radius fillet that's tangent to the circle here and tangent to the line here so we have a feature in fusion we can use we don't need to sketch this arc here because it can a bit it can be really strange when you start uh, doing tangent arcs and trying to constrain them with horizontal constraints and limb uh, equal and symmetries and other stuff so it can really fast get strange 
So let's keep it simple. So I hope I have talked about all the animation I'm going to do. And I might have confused half of you and you left the video, but you who are still here, let's start modeling. So back to the image. Step one, I want to make a sketch of one single part here. So I like to like, have some reference. That's how I started it. So I'm going to create a sketch looking from the top. Uh, I like to pattern this later, so I like to work from the origin point in one direction because I know I'm going to add or remove parts. I don't want to be symmetric, that can be quite hard. So, what are you going to do here? I'm going to start with a rectangle, start from a origin point so we get things locked down. So, starting now, I'm not adding a dimension, I'm simply start drawing. So, this rectangle here is the rectangle we have here. So, we need something more. We're going to have a circle somewhere here. I'm going to have two lines from this going straight down, like this. That's basically all we need in the sketch, but we need to constrain things. So do a line from the center here, because we want this to be in the center of this part, symmetric between the sides. So I'm going to do a line, find the midpoint, simply move the mouse around, uh, use our horizontal vertical constraint and also escape to turn off extrain and highlight this line and turn it into where are you, construction geometry. Uh, that's good. The second thing, we want these two lines to be the same the whole time. We can use an equal constraint or one other possibility. So make a construction line. We do a line. I activate the construction by hitting X or L for start line, X for start construction line. Or switch line type like this and tell Fusion that's going to be horizontal. By doing that, this gets locked down and doesn't move around. So this is the basic shape here. We had some other, let's move over to the image. We had this dimension to the next circle. So I will do a circle construction over here. I do a line, still construction from here to here. This of course, horizontal vertical constraint, equal constraint because these two are going to be equal. And there was one more thing, this can still move away. So I will use not midpoint now, because if I use a midpoint, this circle, the midpoint between these two lines, that's what I want to do. You also get this circle constraint uh, symmetric in the vertical direction. We don't want that. We do a coincident. And uh, we want to find the midpoint of this line and we can't see it. So we hold down shift and we find the midpoint. Click on the midpoint and click on this line. This makes this stay symmetric in this direction. You see, I move it horizontally, but vertically, I'm free to move it around. So, we are getting somewhere. Start adding some dimensions. So, D for dimension. I'm using combination of sketch dimensions and uh, other dimensions or parameters, but we're going to start here. Oops, not that one. D, I want to do the diameter first here. Uh, let's call that cable. OD, outer diameter, and uh, maybe a small a, that's nice. Uh, equals, uh, let's do it 10 millimeters for now. And as I said, I wanted this here to be a ratio of this, but so we can do it for now. So we're going to dimension these two here. They are going to be this dimension multiplied by some type of ratio. So I'm just going to put it in for now. So we can do, if you do it like this, you can't. Uh, name parameters within other parameters when you do here. So we had to do up here, modify, change parameters, open up here, and we can see we have a 0.75. So we use a parameter here. So we do a user parameter, cable, opening, ratio. We make sure it's a no unit because it's just a simple uh, 0.75. No, we don't want it units, not millimeter, stuff like that. We can now go in and edit this, remove the save on, save on 75 and add our cable opening ratio. So now we can change this to 0 0.8 and stuff like that. So that's good. Uh, we're going to dimension, right click, pick arc tangent, the back support here. So let's call that uh, support. Can call it width. Let's just do it four millimeters for now. Uh, bah, 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 bah. What else do we need? Of course, we are now going to hit escape. We are still not constrained fully in any dimension, so we need the dimension down here. We're going to dimension uh, 
tiny tangent again. Right click, select tangent, this circle down here. Here to there. Oh no, I missed. D, right click, circle tangent, tangent, line. Few is a bit sensitive in the order of operation things works. Uh, what do you call this? Cable. Why do you get big A's? Uh, cable to front one. As a dimension, we'll most probably not change anything more of. It's just like a placeholder dimension. And the last one is, of course, uh, we can't move it up and down. We can still move it in this direction. It's the amount of material in between here. So we're going to do dimension, right click, circle arc tangent from here to here. No, sorry. I hate when fusion does that. Right click, arc tangent, that circle and that circle. There you are. Uh, cable. Let's call it simply spacing. And let's do that five for now. So let's open up our sketches and have a look. We now have a fully defined sketch. We don't need to do anything more. So we can finish sketch now. Now there are some possible workflows. We could extrude, uh, E for extrude, simply extrude this part. Let's do it five millimeters like that. And then do a pattern of this body. Of course that works. But the problem is if you change uh, the number of bodies when you do, 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 do combine and stuff like that. So we like to do a slightly different workflow. We like to make the full body with correct dimensions and then cut out uh, these two here and add the fillet. So we're going to delete this extrude, create a new sketch. Uh, going to hold down. So, oops, sorry. Create sketch. I want it on the XY plane so I know where my sketches are. I'm going to do a simple rectangle like this. <coughs> sorry, I needed to cough. Uh, project, I need this corner here. That's the easy one. So we can do a coincidence between here and here. And now this, the height or the width of this direction is controlled by the first sketch. And then we have uh, the dimension of this side. So this needs one more parameter. That's forgotten. Sorry, let's go back. Modify, change parameter. We need the number of parts. Let's make a favorite about that. So we need to do number of cables uh, must be a no unit because we're going to use it for quantity and let's do five to start hit ok so go back and edit this dimension so this needs to be we need to start with parentheses we need the cable od plus the cable spacing that's the full width of one of this part and then multiply by the number of cables like that and we should have correct we can do a check by checking our parameters is 75 if we change the number it's made for February 2 up to 12 it pops away go back to 5 that's good okay we're gonna finish sketch now I can hide my we have two fully defined sketch you see with the lock on them let's hide our first sketch and start extruding the next one here so this is the Hive of a part we want to do, I will not put that parameter. You could also put that parameter, but it will only be used once. So let's do that 10 millimeters. Make it a thick one this time. Fusion, think a bit. Hide the sketch, turn on our first sketch. So what to do now, we want to cut away the hole here. So we're going to extrude. Set, I've turned around the parts, I'm looking from the bottom so I can see the sketch. Select the two uh, profiles. Distance to object. Select the top. Hit OK. Gonna hide the sketch. I've turned off auto hide, so I need to uh, turn the visibility on and off the sketches by hand. The second thing we need to do now, I'm gonna hit F, oh, sorry, not D, F for fillet and change that to full round fillet. Uh, move the mouse over this face. You can see it highlights uh, different faces depending on where you are. I want to highlight it like this the hole and the bottom. Like that, turn around, add the plus sign, and also this side, and hit OK. And we have our basic cutout. S on the keyboard, because we're going to find rectangular pattern. Rectangular pattern. We're going to do it on features. We could select faces, but let's do features. It's, of course, the extrude and the fillet. Direction is going to be along this edge. 
and there's a small problem you can see the arrows are pointing in the wrong direction we're gonna fix that lately so we're gonna do that we can change this to first of all distance type spacing the quantity is our number of cables our distance is the same as we did the width earlier of one part so that's the cable od plus the cable oh, uh, spacing but it's in the wrong direction so we're going to do parenthesis go home but so we put all of this inside a parenthesis and at the beginning of we put a minus sign so it goes in the correct direction you can change compute option here adjust is the tough one optimized is most cases the fastest one if you have like in this case we have a simple body uh, optimized basically just take the faces these three faces and copy them over the body and remove things that's not needed anymore so we're going to do optimize and we hit ok and we have our little part now a little bit for flare and fun i'm going to add some more fillets i'm going to put a fillet on all the outer corners of this body just a small one let's make it one millimeter like that and we have made only parts so let's see now we can play around with the parameters we can change the number of cables three 12 no problem let's do it six just to keep it in screen you can see the small fill again make it large if you want to do that uh maybe you want a smaller opening or even me even more so more tight to get the cable in uh, the cables are bigger they're going to be 12 millimeters and i want more support with on the back gonna be six millimeters or i want to change the spacing to like 10 millimeters really wide apart uh, maybe i want the cable hole to be slightly deeper inside uh, that's the cable to front let's make that this parameter can crash if it goes too far in so the, the it doesn't add up with the dimensions we have it's going to crash but we should be able to do 1.5 maybe we can make it two geometry can always buy two so yeah two let's do it like that so by doing this you can make a model print it try it out go back change the parameters you need to do and so this is how i started with this image as an inspiration and ended up with a parametric model that I can use uh, that corner fillet is too small that needs to be i need to change that to two millimeter that looks much softer and nicer so uh, i hope this can be useful for you on how to decipher if you start with an image and try to find a parametric model that's working with a rectangular pattern so with that said take care see you around and goodbye